Hello students and welcome. So today's topic it is that is conservation and biodiversity in situ and ex situ conservation. So first of all, what exactly is in situ conservation? Conservation means protection. We are protecting the animals. We are protecting the plants. Okay, so that the biodiversity it could be maintained. So we are protecting the plants and animals in their natural habitat where already they are present. So this is how we are able to recover the population which might be have reduced. So here the examples of the in situ conservation are the national park, biosphere, reserves, wildlife, sanctuaries. Next is about the ex situ conservation. Here we are protecting the animals uh, outside the habitat. So here we have artificially prepared the habitat and here we are uh, conserving those species. So this is how the animals which are endangered species and which are at the urge of extinction, their population, we are able to recover. How? by artificially preparing a habitat for them. So here comes the examples like the botanical gardens, zoological parks and also the safaris. So first we'll talk about the in situ conservation. We are protecting, we are conserving the species within their natural habitat. So this is how uh, we, ha ma uh, we have made a kind of a protective area uh, right for these species so that they cannot be get disturbed by any kind of uh, human activities. And first here this kind of conservation of animals it is less expensive and it is easy to manage in situ conservation it is the one which is without the human interference and it is for the protect interest of indigenous people it means the people here they get to know about the animals how in the natural habitat they are living so it maintains and also protect these wild species animals and it is cost effective and very much convenient and we are able to conserve these kinds of biodiversity uh, of the plants also and animals also. So in situ conservation examples which we are going to study is like the national parks. National parks we are completely strictly reserved area. Why? So that we can conserve for the betterment of the wildlife species. So here the activities like forestry, grazing, all these are restricted restricted at restricted at a kind of a limit and the national parks they are uh, spread at the like at the region of 100 square kilometer to 500 square kilometer and here it is maintained by a national government so in india there are about 103 national parks present so the very first national park in india is the jim corbett national park it was here done in the 1936 Next, uh, in situ conservation is the wildlife sanctuaries. These are also the protected area which are reserved for conservation and only and only for the animals. And here, the human activities like harvesting of timber are allowed as long as they are not interfered with the well-being of animals. And the boundaries not well defined in these regions. So here, they are the region where there is a controlled biotic interference permitted like the tourist activity and there are total five 544 sanctuaries present in India. Next is the Biosphere Reserve. The, here, the Biosphere Reserve, it is kind of a protective area where human population also forms a part of this reserved area. So here, this concept was evolved by the UNESCO. And in India, there are about 18 biosphere reserves in India. So this biosphere reserve, they are divided into three zones. Core zone here, then comes a buffer zone and then comes a transition zone. Core zone is the area. This is called as the center one is the core area, the inner zone. It is always for the animals and it is undisturbed and it is a legal protected area. Then comes the blue zone, right, which is called as a buffer zone. Here, this is the area where the research and educational processes for the uh, students and for the researchers, here it is permitted. And the last comes the transition zone, which is for the cropping, forestry, recreation and also for the fishing so the main function of biosphere reserve is it is for the conservation of animals also and it is also for the development for the uh, students for the teachers and also for the research scientific institutes next here there is a, one of the one more in situ conservation that is sacred groups and lakes these are kind of a sacred forest patches which is present in the forest area for it is a kind of a workshop place so here it is a kind of a symbol of high esteem especially for the tribal communities and government so they are a uh, kind of a places where uh, they uh, it is a kind of a worship place for the tribal areas and it is most undisturbed place forest patch 
place. Example, the Khasi Hills of Meghalaya. And here it is mainly for the tribal people, tribes which have built these temples uh, in places, such patches like uh, area in a kind of a forest. So here it is a kind of a sacred place, not even a single branch of a tree, it is being cut down so that uh, it is helpful for the animals which are living in those area and here the endemic species they easily flourish in these area there are some sacred lakes also like water bodies like the lake mansar in jammu and kashmir now next is about the x c2 conservation here we are protecting the animals in an artificial habitat prepared by the humans so x c2 conservation it is protecting the animals especially the endangered animals and also the endangered plants here from the natural habitat they are being put down into the artificial habitat so the biodiversity could be conserved and here in, instead of the natural habitat they are being kept in the artificial habitat so the animals which are at the urge of extinction here they are being successfully bred and the number is about to get produced in this ex situ conservation and here it is also a place for the research and it also helps the other people to observe these kinds of wild animals so example here comes the botanical gardens here the uh, plants which are like the rare plants herbs rare herbs rare medicinal plants they are being grown like the flowers fruits and vegetable here it is providing a kind of a beauty and calm environment and the exotic plants it has also been studied for agricultural sorry for the educational and researchal point of view next comes the zoological gardens here it is called as a zoo where wild animals are kept under captivity and also under the supervision the first indian zoo uh, is the first zoo which was built in India is Barakpur and the next is ex situ conservation is the G seed gene bank here the seeds of the plants are being kept in a minus degree Celsius temperature that is a cold storage and the seeds are kept under a controlled low temperature so that we can maintain a kind of a uh, humidity is maintained and low temperature is maintained that is why the seeds they are viable for a long duration of time next is the cryo preservation here some of the Biotic parts is being preserved in a liquid nitrogen that is minus 196 degree Celsius temperature and here this biotic parts all the metabolic activities it is being stopped just because the biological part it is kept under minus degree Celsius temperature so late it can be used for the research purpose so this is how our lecture ends and thank you very much.